happening everybody welcome back to the channel i am dial here with a classic movie review yeah we're getting a little bit more versatile with the movie genres i'm covering on this channel we're tapping into some black entertainment for the grown and sexy only for the grown and sexy but anyway we're gonna be talking about the best man film series uh, the Best Man, The Final Chapters, is a new series continuing on in the Best Man franchise. It's going to be airing on Peacock in a couple of weeks. So I decided, let's go back and talk about the first two movies, starting with the original, The Best Man. came out in 1999, directed by Malcolm D. Lee. So, uh, for me personally, you know, I love to support me some black, you know, black creative um directors and writers and you know just movies in general and shows in general but you know i'm gonna be real with you guys it's been a bit hit or miss the past few years you know sometimes you'll get some decent stuff like think like a man uh but then you have some stuff that's not so great like uh, a good amount of tyler perry's movies you know so i know there's some there's some really good uh black shows and movies out there that uh you know uh, not saying it's all bad, but like, you know, it's like you really got to find that really good, you know, show or movie, at least in my opinion. As much as I love to support me, some black creators, you, we got to put in a little bit more effort here. I'm talking to you, Tim Story, even though I do like your barbershop movies. I do like them a lot. But I'm happy to say that The Best Man is one of those uh, movies that I really, really enjoy. Uh, the first Best Man movie I liked a lot. It was very entertaining. Um, so as I said, uh, it came out in 1999. I was four years old when this film came out. So uh, definitely was not age appropriate to, to see this when it came out. Um, I didn't end up seeing this until I was in high school. But yeah, when I first watched it, um, uh, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I thought it was really funny. I enjoyed the um, the chemistry and the banter between all the characters. Um, and also it was a really, it was a really um, engaging drama as well. Like not only was it able to balance all the humor in this, you know, in the movie, but it also got pretty serious, you know, when it needed to be. It was able to balance the two tones out really, really well. Um, it ended up being one of the, you know, one of the better um, black dramas out there. Barely the good movie. Um, for those of you who don't know what this movie is about, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Uh, we follow um, Harper Stewart, played by Tay Diggs. He's an up-and-coming uh, author uh, with his debut novel, Unfinished Business, that's been selected by Oprah's Book Club which uh, I guess that's pretty it was pretty cool back then which she had a book club but yeah his book was chosen by that um and she, he also has a girlfriend named Robin who is frustrated uh by his unwillingness to commit to a uh, a long-term relationship because that seems to be one of his personal things because like he's afraid of commitment and that's one of the main themes of this movie but anyway, um, Harper uh, has to travel back to New York City to spend the weekend with some old friends from college before they all have to attend the wedding of Lance Sullivan, played by Morris Chestnut. He's a uh, running back for the New York Giants, and he's, she's, he's about to get married to the love of his life, Mia. And of course, Harper is the best man of, uh, of Lance. Um, but anyway, with the book, it turns out that um, someone passed it an advanced copy of his book and it was passed around the inner circle of his friends uh, when he didn't want it to be. Um, and he didn't want this book to come out like so early because uh, this book actually um, is kind of like a based on tr a true story fictional type of book about his, um, his stories in college and uh the relationships that he had uh with some girls and stuff like that and it just so happens that um he was airing out his dirty laundry about uh, the girls and friends that he was close to um and so it's him trying to you know make sure the book doesn't get to lance because um there was actually some saucy details about uh, his fiance in the book that uh, I don't think Lance would be very happy with that um, that Harper wrote about. Uh, so that's pretty much the main bulk of the movie. That's the main plot point. But um, 
but yeah, what I really, really enjoyed about this film was the um the interaction between all the characters. I thought every all the characters in this movie was very was very engaging to watch, and you know the chemistry between everyone was just so so good. You can tell that everyone like you know have been friends for a long time, or they knew each other for a long time. Um, as I said, like they they've known each other through college, and we see a couple of flashbacks with them. You know, um, you know. It, just get to know each other in college and you know you just you see that friendship flourish when they're you know when they're full-grown adults um but yeah i definitely love the chemistry between everyone um i thought tay diggs was pretty good in the movie uh morris chestnut really really good as well uh mia long as uh, jordan was also very good sana lathan as robin um uh harold Perrin Neal, I hope I said his name right. He's a Link from the Matrix movies. Um, but yeah, he was very good too. And Terrence Howard as Quentin, uh, probably one of my favorite characters in the film. Uh, he was very funny. He was very entertaining to watch. Um, even Melissa de Sosa Shelby, probably my least favorite character because she she was pretty annoying. Um, I'll talk about talk more about her character in in a minute, but yeah, she's probably my least favorite character in here. But you still, she she had some good chemistry with the other with the other characters in the film. But um, but yeah, this this is this as I said, this is a pretty funny uh movie. You know, there was a, quite a few moments where I was like, you know, they they have some really good humor humorous moments in here. Um, like you know, Quentin probably is the funniest character in the movie because you know he's a player. You know he's the player of the group. He like he doesn't want to be monogamous to anyone at all. You know uh, he likes to sleep around with a bunch of women. Um, but yeah, it's like he definitely um, brought energy to the to the film whenever he was on screen. Um, Julian uh, Harold uh, Perineo's character. He I guess he's playing the he plays the the simp of the group because. Um, he he's married to or i think he's about to get about to be separated with uh melissa de sosa's character shelby because shelby is a control freak uh that's one of the reasons why i didn't care for that much in this movie but um but yes but julian is pretty much the simp like she he doesn't know how to say no to shelby even though um she's being like mentally abusive to him and like not appreciating all the stuff that he's doing or demasculating him so he goes through that whole ordeal, and then yeah, as I said, with Harper's character, like he is in a uh, relationship with uh, Sanaa Lathan's character Robin, but he doesn't know how to fully commit to someone yet. He's having conflicts with that because of you know the affairs that he's had in in uh, college with other women. So he's unsure if he wants to give that up, and specifically because he couldn't get over um, his college crush Jordan, who is Nia Long's character. Um, cause they were, they were about to hook, they were going to hook up in a college, but it never happened. And then they reunite for, um, Lance's wedding, you know, because she helps, she's helping to plan the wedding and stuff like that. So he's dealing with conflicts of, I, she, he really wants to commit to Robin, but at the same time, he still has feelings for Jordan and he still wants to, you know, still wants to hook up with her. So he's dealing with that. And then, um... Morris Chestnut's character Lance. Um, so back in college, you know, he was best friends with Harper. Um, but in college, he liked to sleep with a bunch of women too. And um, and then he meets uh, Mia, who ends up being his fiance, played by Monica Cal Calhoun. I hope I said her last name correct. But um, when we first meet Mia in college, you know, she she was one of those pure girls, you know, she didn't like sleeping around. She she wanted to save herself for marriage. Um, but, you know, um, Lance and Mia end up dating in college. But, you know, Lance ended up getting himself in trouble by, you know, uh, sleeping around with a bunch of other women still. And Mia finds out and uh, that causes the whole uh, affair that Mia ended up having with harper and that is what uh, harper ends up writing about in his book that's that's the main reason why he didn't want the book to be out there just yet because of course it will cause conflicts with um with lance and mia with uh with their marriage so um yeah but while this was a very entertaining movie 
you know it does have some really funny scenes um like it does it does serve as a pretty solid commentary on toxic relationships in general which is what i didn't really expect from this movie you know because you see that everyone's dealing with their like personal conflicts when it comes to you know committing to a, a relationship or a marriage like they all have their own personal you know issues to to deal with um especially with harper you know because like as i said like he is unsure about committing to robin because you know he's you know he's comparing everyone to um jordan you know his college crush and he he just is afraid that you know he'll that he wouldn't be good enough uh for robin you know so like that that i thought was interesting um and also i just feel like it probably wasn't a good idea for him to write about all the you know the affairs and you would like the situationships that's been happening between all their friends like I, he didn't really do a good enough job um like masking that in the book so they won't so people won't catch on to who he's actually referring to so that, i thought that was kind of dumb on harper's part i'll admit um but like as i said like with the other characters they still have you know i guess it's probably a commentary on like everyone has their own like stuff to work on emotionally um, when it comes to relationships because like with terrence howard's character quentin i mean yes he he doesn't believe in being monogamous and stuff like that like he wants to sleep around with a bunch of women but like how long is that gonna make him happy you know you know you could only do that for so long but i you know you i do slightly feel like quentin you know wants to commit to a girl but he doesn't he doesn't feel like he he's fully ready for that too you know he wants to be the pimp you know he wants to be you know a player so like but how long can you can you deal with that before you start become i'm happy so then with um with julian you know like it's it's bad that he it's really bad that he has to deal with someone as toxic as um as shelby as, as i said demasculating him and like he's afraid to lose her you know um if she doesn't get her way um and you know that's just the commentary on like you know let let the man be the man you know like don't demasculate him like be uh, women should you know women like shelby should be more appreciative of having someone as you know as nice as julian you know being able to bend over backwards for you for anything for the for the kids that they have because they do have kids you know so it's just like that's it was interesting commentary on that and then um and then okay so when it comes to like the the whole um affair that mia had with um harper it, it was strange to me that the, the the one person that walked out of this unscathed was her you know because you know she's the one that cheated on lance and like it was just weird to me that nobody confronted her about that you know she's just she's just um she's just seen as you know the perfect the perfect uh girl of the group you know um and i guess they're trying to paint it like her actions were justified uh for cheating on lance because lance had a couple of affairs here and there which i'm not even saying that you know I'm not trying to justify either of them like it was wrong for lance to sleep around while he was trying to be in a relationship with mia but i don't think it makes the situation any better that mia had an affair with someone else and on top of that had an affair with lance's best friend like that's some really cold stuff like i know lance messed up but like you know two wrongs don't make a right in the situation like neither people should be cheating on one another so that's kind of a commentary like i that's interesting that they tackled in this but as i said i wish that you know mia had a little bit more accountability when it came to that too you know because she's not all in the right as well so that, that's probably the one thing that slightly bothered me about it but other than that you know you just have all of these like all of these dynamics that you know connect with one another in such a coherent way you know it's like they all have their own different um dynamics they have to work through and you know malcolm 
ha- did a good job um, tying all these stories together. Yeah, Malcolm did write and direct this, and you know, Malcolm Malcolm D. Lee's probably one of the he he's a okay director. He's decent. Um, the the recent the most recent thing I've seen from him um, as of late was Space Jam: A New Legacy, which I know for a lot of people they didn't really like that movie, but I thought I thought I enjoyed uh, Space Jam too. I thought it was a fun time. But he's a decent director. I feel like when he handles like serious dramas like this, he can he can um, flourish and stuff like that because he does have some really good commentary that that is relevant for today. Because you know when it comes to the dating scene uh, today and like just relationships in general, like there is some stuff that I feel is relevant for today. You know, and also there's a slight bit of commentary on like religion, like how you know. How does religion look at, you know, marriage and relationships of, you know, you should save yourself for marriage and stuff like that and being faithful to someone. So I like that this movie tackled that in, you know, in certain in certain um, certain points of the story. Um, But outside of that, outside of that commentary, as I said, it was a very entertaining movie. Um, it was very entertaining and funny to see all these uh, characters interact off of each other, especially the guys between Harper, Lance, Quentin, and Julian. I thought they all were really good together. Uh, as I said, you could tell that they've been friends for a long time. And uh, yeah, there's some all right um, funny scenes, like um, of course you know the the bachelor party with the strippers. Um, that was that was a really funny scene. I had a good time with that. Oh, there's one other character we haven't talked about it was uh, Candy. Uh, played by regina hall is one of the strippers from the bachelor party that um that julian ends up falling for um we don't get to know a lot about her character we end up knowing more about her in um in the best man holiday but uh she she ends up being the alternative for julian because you know of course the relationship between shelby and julian is extremely toxic and you know and you know um Julian ends up creating a brief but you know but a sweet connection with Candy which was very unexpected um he ends up falling for a stripper which it didn't you know that's something you wouldn't really expect but like it was somewhat endearing the little the little time we saw with these two together so uh but yeah I did I thought Regina Hall was pretty solid in this um but yeah overall it's, this was a very very good movie um if you guys haven't seen this already it, it this is on peacock i think they, they have all they have both the best man movies on peacock and so if you guys have it uh i recommend you guys watch it if you haven't already if you do enjoy black dramas and comedies i definitely recommend watching this it's very fun um but also it was very it was very engaging with you know just them tackling the different dynamics of toxic relationships and marriage and commitment you know, and a little bit on how religion looks at, you know, committing in relationships and marriage. So I was surprised they were able to handle all of that in such a such a interesting way. But yeah, overall, I will give The Best Man a B plus. It's a really, really good movie. Check it out if you haven't. But yeah, those are my thoughts on The Best Man. What did you guys think about it? Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate it? Did you guys think it was okay? Comment your thoughts down below and let me know. So, the next film I will be talking about is The Best Man Holiday. So tune in for that when it comes out. But if you guys enjoyed this review, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Please, please subscribe to the channel. And hit the bell while you're at it if you want to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. But that's all I have for you movie fans. And I will see you guys next time. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.